What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to create efficient, professional and simple visualizations of Excel files using Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so this is going to be quite a foundational video. We're going to work with a simple Excel file like this one here. So data.excel or data.xlsx is the file that I have prepared here. It's a simple file uh, of a habit tracker. So we have a date here on the left and we have then uh, some workout stats, some water drinking stats, some reading stats, some supplement stats and some journaling stats. So those are the habits. Now, of course, you can also add some formatting here like uh, minutes or liters or pages and all that. But this is just some sample data. You can use whatever data you want. I'm going to use this here as an example. Um, don't focus on the data, focus on the visualization. So this is an Excel file now. And this Excel file is deliberately designed uh, to cause problems when working in pandas with it. So we cannot just load this Excel file into pandas because, for example, we have a heading here that does not belong to the data. We have a free row here that does not belong to the data. We have a free column here that does not belong to the data. So this is the actual data here. Now, preferably when you work with Python and visualizations, you want to have simple CSV files uh, where the first row is just a heading and then you have um, the individual data rows here. However, we're going to work with this here to have a challenge. And the first thing we want to do here is we want to install the libraries that we need to work with this data. So we're going to open up the command line here and we're going to say pip install uh, pandas. This is the most foundational library that we're going to use here to work with the data frames that are very similar to Excel tables. And then we're going to say pip install uh, and we're going to also install matplotlib and we're going to install also Seaborn. Those are the two visualization libraries. Seaborn is a matplotlib wrapper, so a library that is basically making the usage of map.lib easier and add some uh, functionality on top. So what we want to do here now is we want to import pandas as pd. We want to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and we want to import seaborn as sns. So those are the libraries that we're going to use with the respective aliases. And now let's go ahead and start with some very basic stuff. Let's say data equals pd dot read Excel to load the Excel file into the script. So we're going to provide here the x uh, xlsx file. And we're going to say now print data just to see how this looks in Python when it's printed. <clears throat> And as you can see now here, we have some problems. First of all, we have uh, a bunch of things here that are treated like they are uh, the column names, but they're not because this is just uh, unnamed uh, cells. And then we have this habit tracker heading and then we have some NAND values. So we need to clean this up first. And for that, what we're going to do here is we're going to provide um, a parameter and this is going to be the parameter skip rows and we're going to skip the first, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we're going to skip the first two rows in order to basically ignore these. Now, of course, you can also just go ahead in Excel and just remove them. But the problem here is, of course, sometimes you want to keep the Excel file, but you still want to do the Python visualization. So we will just do it in Python while loading the Excel file using pandas. Now for the column, we're going to just drop the column by doing the following thing data equals data and then dot I lock and we're going to select everything. But we're going to skip the first column by specifying one colon if we want to keep the first col uh, column, we would have to do just a colon or maybe zero colon. But by doing one colon, we skip the first column. And then we can go ahead and see that the data is now properly loaded in Python. So you can see here at the top, we have the column names, we have here, uh, the individual rows, and we have an index. Now, if you want to change the index of the data frame uh, to the date, for example, what you do is you say data equals data dot set index. And then you say date. And then we don't have an index anymore. We just have uh, the date here. I mean, we do have an index, which is the date, but we don't have a counter, we don't have an identifier, which is just a range. So this is how you load the data into Python. Now, what you can also do now is you can go ahead and do some visualization. So we're going to start with a very, very simple visualization, we're just going to say plt dot plot. And we're going to plot some simple uh, thing here like data dot workout. By the way, you can provide a column names here by using a dot or by using square brackets and passing here workout. Uh, and then this is the y value. So for the x value, we want to have uh, the date now date is no longer a column. 
it's the index. So we provide data dot index. If you were not doing this year, so if you don't set the index to date, you can just provide data and then date like this year. And then what we're going to do, we're going to say PLT show. So this is already going to be quite a simple visualization of the workout uh, that we have here. So now here we have the minutes that have been worked out. Um, and here we have the date. So what we can do now is we can add some labels, we can say PLT X label. And then uh, this is going to be the date PLT Y label, this is going to be the workout time in minutes, for example. Uh, and that should actually be it. So oh, of course, one thing that we might want to add is a title, we want to say, workout stats, for example, so let's rerun this here. And you will end up with a simple visualization here. So this can also be done with Seaborn. So you can just go ahead and say SNS dot line plot, however, it's going to have the same results. So the only difference here, and this is why I want to show you that is in Seaborn, what we used to do is we do uh, data and then equals data and then we provide just the strings as the column name. So we say x equals date and then we say uh, y equals uh, workout, for example, I hope this works now with the index being set to date. Uh, but it should work. So let's just go ahead plt show let's copy all this because as I said, Seaborn is a wrapper around Matplotlib. So if you use Seaborn, you still have to use the plt commands to provide all these things and to do the plt show. But essentially, this is the same graph as you can see here. However, Seaborn makes a lot of other plots easier. And um, what I want to do next here before we go to the next plot is I want to uh, pre process some data because when we look at the data here, you're going to see that uh, we have two uh, columns here that are yes and no values, obviously Boolean. So we only have two possible values. The problem is though, that they're now just strings. So the pandas data frame doesn't know that those are booleans. So what we can do here is we can map them to zero and one. So what we can do is we can say data, and then uh, what was it supplements equals data supplements, and then we're going to map based on a dictionary and the dictionary is going to map yes to one and no to zero. And we're going to do the same thing here with the journaling. Journaling, there you go. So when we print the data now, let's just delete this statement up here, we're going to see that data has zero and one instead of yes and no. And this can be plotted uh, more easily and can also be used for calculations and other things because data is now a numerical value, you can of course also use a Boolean, but uh, this is now just a numerical approach here. So what we're going to do next, we're going to do uh, multiple plots, this is something quite simple, we just say the figure and the axes are PLT subplots. And uh, here we provide now the grid. So if you want to have two by two, if you want to have two um, rows and two columns, you can provide two two, uh, I want to have four rows with one column. So I just want to have four uh, graphs below each other. And because of that, I do it like this. And then you have axis zero, one, two, and three. And here you can do just the plotting. So we can say, for example, I want to plot the data index, so the date, and the data workout, for example, and then I want to say, axis zero, here we now cannot just say uh, dot title dot x label, we need to say dot set title. And this is going to be workout stats, then axis zero dot set x label, this is going to be um, the date, and then set y label, and this is going to be the workout time. Or maybe we can just say time let's just say time and then provide min here as uh, as a unit. And then we can say I think actually that's it. Now we can copy all this. And we can change this here to one. And here now we plot not the workout, but what was the other thing uh, we had the water, water stats, how much water we drink on a daily basis. Oh, actually, this is I think the name was actually drinking water. And then we had down here, uh, water stats, and then date and water in liters. And we can copy this now and do this two more times. So this is going to be set to two, 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 and then three, three, 
three. And here we're going to say now, what do we want to do reading? Uh, actually, yeah, reading was the column name, then we had reading stats. And we had date and we had pages. And for the last one, I want to do something different. I want to do a bar plot. So I want to say yes or no, either a bar or no bar for the journaling. When do we journal? When do we not journal? And then you can see um, the stats there. So journaling stats. And here just yes or no. And then we can say plt dot show at the end and we should see a graph with multiple subplots. So a figure with multiple subplots, as you can see here now, probably we can, uh, I think there's something called the PLT tight layout. I hope this is enough to fix this. Otherwise, you need to, uh, to look up more advanced structuring techniques. But there you go. So now you have the workout stats, the water stats, the reading stats, drilling stats, of, of course, not very detailed, you can of course, also change the axis and all that. I have a couple of videos on visualization, if you want to go into more detail, but this is just a basic uh, graph with or a basic figure with multiple subplots. So then I want to show you one thing that is a little bit more complicated in terms of the graph itself, but it's just a one liner in Python. So it's not complicated for you. It's a complicated, sophisticated professional graph, but you don't have to do anything complicated to show it. And this is the correlation heat map. So now we have a bunch of features in there, we have the workout, we have uh, whether the person has journaled or not, we want to see what is the correlation between all these uh, values. And we can do that in the command line by just saying data.core. This is one possibility, you can see like that, or we can plot a professional heat map. And for that, what we do is we just say SNS dot heat map, and we provide data dot correlation, we provide anot for annotation equals true. And we say C map, and you can choose a color map, you can just Google what color maps are available. But the one we're going to use is the yellow. So Y L G N B U yellow, green, blue. And then we're going to just say PLT show and this is going to create a professional correlation heat map of your data. And you can see then that uh, certain things are correlated. So supplements seem to be negatively correlated with journaling that might be meaningless might have some some meaning drinking water seems to be very positively correlated with workout, uh, which makes sense when you work out, you should drink more uh, on rest days, maybe you don't drink so much. Uh, that makes sense. And yeah, this is what you can do. Now, one last thing that I want to show you here before we end this video is how you can add some additional information based on what you already have and how you can also visualize that. So for example, we now have a lot, a lot of dates, what we might want to do is we might want to take them and extract the weekday. So is this a Sunday? Is this a more uh, a Monday, a Tuesday, and so on, and then to visualize that data, maybe we can find some correlation between a Sunday and not working out. So I deliberately designed the data to find such a pattern, but maybe in your data that was not designed by you artificially, you can find some patterns like that. And for this, what we're going to do is we're going to say data equals data dot reset index, because we need to work with the data uh, with the date. So we're not gonna have it as an index here, I'm going to also delete all this here. And we're going to say the data weekday is going to be uh, just the data date. And we can treat the date as a date time object. So as dot DT, and then we can just say weekday here. Um, and then we can say another feature that we're going to create is the is underscore Sunday feature, this is going to be a Boolean feature, and it's going to be determined by the weekday being equal to six, because we start counting from zero, zero is Monday, six is Sunday. Um, so this will be a yes or no, whether it's a Sunday or not. Uh, we can print the data to see what this looks like. And um, there you go, true false, 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 false. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday again. So this works. And now we can go ahead and just plot a simple line plot, we can say SNS line plot, the data is the data, the x coordinate is the date, the y coordinate is the workout. And then we can do the same thing with a scatter plot. So we want to have a dot on the line every time. Uh, and the only thing that we're going to change here is that we're going to specify an additional parameter the hue. So the color is going to be determined by the is Sunday attribute by the is Sunday feature, and we're going to say plt show. And that is going to be our final graph here. As you can see, there is a pattern you can see on every Sunday, there is no workout. Of course, there are also days where there's no workout that are not Sundays. But you can see here true means this is a Sunday, all the orange points mean zero minutes worked out.
I deliberately, deliberately designed uh, it like that. But we can also do the same thing, I hope so, for the journaling, because the journaling, I also artificially designed the data so that the journaling happens on every Sunday. So this should be also something that can be seen here. Now, this is not the most beautiful graph, but you can see every time when journaling happens, it's an orange point. So it's a Sunday, but it also happens sometimes when it's not a Sunday. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.